Hi, I'm Susanna Magenheimer, also known as Random Artist 222. Welcome to the Mixed Media Mania YouTube Hop Fall 2018. I am beyond thrilled to be included with such a talented group of artists with a collection of wonderful videos full of inspiration. Not to mention, we also have a bunch of amazing companies sponsoring this hop and providing awesome prizes. And please note, some artists are also providing their own prizes, so make sure you read all the details in each video you visit. But you must subscribe and comment for a chance to win at each video hop. So let's get started. FYI, due to the size of my project, I fast forwarded portions of the video and um, hopefully my voiceover will explain what's happening. Um, however, I do plan to post additional videos demonstrating portions of the techniques in the future. This is my introduction to my happy accident with Liquitex pouring medium a couple of years ago. It's not just for oozing enormous amounts of paint anymore to create cool paint flows. So here are some things I noticed. It's basically a semi-clear plastic when it dries. It is also flexible when it dries. So this is a mannequin I altered using the um, Liquitex pouring technique where I just put a thin amount of Liquitex on a texture mat sheet and kind of smooshed it around and um, got a little bit of a grungy look to it and then in this case they were scales and I glued it onto the, to the mannequin. This is another example of a skull that I did with a mold, and you see how flexi flexible it is wrapped around the little bottle. So here are some samples of silicone molds I use. Texture mat, the thicker silicone mat, which you want to use because it allows air to move through the mold versus some of the harder molds that are non-silicone based. Um, you want to make sure that you pour your medium into a smaller bottle with a pipette it makes it easier to apply and get down into the nooks and crannies. Um, obviously in its liquid state it is white. Um, drying time varies depending on the depth of the mold. I always find it's best to do them in the evening and let them dry overnight. Um, and it also depends on your climate. Um, the thinner the application though, the less time it takes. That one I'm pointing to on the thin texture mat takes about an hour to dry. Make sure you clean your pipette because once that plastic dries, it's hard and you won't be able to use it again. I should note that not all pouring mediums act the same way and I found Liquitex best for my purposes. I'm showing here how it dries to a semi-clear plastic that's flexible. Um, before you pull it out completely, just make sure that it's dry and you can tell by feel basically and that's a learning process. It also takes gesso very well and it, the more gesso you put on it, the stiffer it becomes. It also accepts paint very well, and also if you use those mica powders that are on the market, you can color the, the, the pouring medium so that it gets that translucent watercolor effect. Make sure you don't get this on your fingers. It is a hard plastic, and you don't want to ingest it. Um, I'm showing some pieces I created that are like little faux pendants, but I can use them for mixed media inclusions, and it's an example of how you can use this technique to create faux clay mold resin effects. So I just finished showing how I'm going to be creating pieces for my uh, project as we proceed. Um, but now I'm going to show you the substrate I'm going to use, which are microscope slide cases. Um, they come in two styles that I know of. They're very sturdy and thick, so they can take a lot of application. Um, they run about three, three and three quarter inches in dimension, and that one about one and a half inches wide, same, same length. What I like about these is aside from being cute, you can remove that centerpiece, trim it, and put a photo in it. Or you can put photo corners on the other side and use it as a little mini photo album or a journal or whatever your heart desires. Before I proceed, I just wanted to say I had two wonderful companies provide me with some sample products. I bought from both of these companies in the past, and their products are very cool. What I'm showing here is some awesome chipboard from Umwow, and Didi is the owner of Umwow and does a wonderful job. Look how small this bat is, by the way. It's incredibly tiny, and it's detailed. The other company is Thermoweb, and they sent me Rebecca Meyer Designs Mixed Media Adhesive Sheets, Art Paper, Adhesives, um, Tape, and also transfer foils in a bunch of colors that are beautiful. So now on to my project. My goal was to create a dramatic dimensional cover as if a person was caught in a web. I'm placing the pieces just to see how they look. I use Lumiere paint to give it an eerie glow. 
I'm now gluing the web with matte medium, and by the way, that's a Sizzix die from Tim Holtz, Cobweb. Um, and also because of the rest of the work I have to do on the other sides of the uh, microscope case, I'm going to come back to finishing the cover later. So for the next part of my project, I wanted to create a cloudy sunset, eerie night um, using a jelly print. So what you're seeing is the jelly plate, roller, and paint, the basics. And that's some deli paper. I'm showing that it has a slick side and a dry side. You want to use the dry side against the paint. I'm calling this the crimping technique because I don't want the whole sheet laying on the jelly plate. So here you see me crimping pieces of the um, deli paper so that it won't touch the paint below. And once I get what pleases me, I decide to smoosh it down to get the paint to adhere to the rest of it. And this is an example of it on black background so you can see how the gaps occur through the crimping techniques and allows light to come through, whether it's the black paper or the green that I'm going to be using. So now I'm gluing on the dry deli paper I created and I stamped a haunted house from Stampendous onto it um, as my focal image. I'm gluing it down again with matte medium and um, because my microscope case has straight edges I'm going to trim that with scissors, but there's also a side closer to the middle that I can't get to with scissors. And whenever you're dealing with deli paper and you're not dealing with straight edges, you want to use a tearing technique so that when you apply the glue, that edge will pretty much disappear. You also want to make sure that you not only glue the top of the back of the deli paper, but as you also saw, the green portion of the case and also the top of the deli paper. That allows you to have the ability to blend once it dries. I'm using a little rubber eraser to get some glue that straight. This is a pit big brush pen, say that three times fast, which I'm applying to highlight my background. And because I put the matte medium on there, that's allowing me a few seconds to blend out that color. So definitely wait till it dries and then do that technique. I tried using a uniball pen to create a yellow moon, but that wasn't working too well for me. So I grabbed some PBO acrylic fluorescent yellow paint. Um, I used a pointed Q-tip. I love these for the artistic control it lets me have. And I also, what you can't see it yet, um, added some texture. Here's a close-up of the final rendering. And now I'm just stamping um, one side of this with some spider webs to continue that web effect theme that I'm attempting to get. So now I'm applying collage slides and I'm using the ThermoWeb double-sided adhesive paper um, which holds it very well. I'm also edging them with black brush pen so that it's a clean um, professional look. And then I wanted to give the skeleton an effect of like that he was in the grave. So I used some Prima mini art stones that I placed in a baggie and I dyed with some gray ink. I'll be showing the the mini stones if you haven't seen this product um, in a second in the video as I clean up some of the, the gravel. <laughs> and I'm doing that one second so that you can see the art stones. They die very easily so um, that's a that's a aspect I really like about them. I then use some Ranger glossy accents to glue the gravel into place. I'm incorporating a zombie from Umwow, and I'm using um, Emerald Creek's embossing powder bronze. I wanted it to have a really grungy um, brown look to it, and so I'm basically embossing. If you've never done that before, it's basically um, tiny bits of plastic in a jar that you use embossing ink to adhere to whatever surface you're going to emboss, then you use a heat gun to melt it. Um, to do the texture process that I'm doing here right now, you need to do this three times. And part of the process is making sure that the stamp you're going to use is a rubber stamp 
and use plenty of embossing ink so that it releases and protects the stamp. You never ever want to do this with a plastic or silicone st stamp, it will damage it. You need to apply a lot of pressure on this third go around and I did not and you only have a few seconds and I did get an impression um, but you know hindsight be 2020 I should have probably just remelted it and redid the impression. I'm now going to use some Nouveau Mousse which basically is a cream that you can use to highlight things um, and in this case I'm going to be highlighting the texture to make it pop more. Um, one thing I do like about this cream is it doesn't have a, a smell, um, which some of the some others do have. And then I'm using a baby wipe to knock back some of the color because I made them too green and I didn't want that. And you'll be seeing a close-up of him coming up in a second. And coming up is a close-up of the textures, as I promised. And now all I have to do is glue the zombie in. And that's side two. So now onto side four. I'm using a Tim Holtz Sizzix die called Tangled Twigs. And I used a glue, glue pen off-screen, as I didn't want to bore you all doing that. Um, I like using a little mini silicone pad, as you see there, um, to um, create an even pressure while things are drying. And I'm just touching it up by cutting off the extras. And now I'm gluing on some zombie hands coming from the ground that are also from Umwell. And I pre-embossed those since we looked at embossing earlier. And um, then finally I'm gluing on a little mini cicada from Umwell that I hand painted. So now I'm returning to side one to finish the cover. It's going to be a little bit of a dimensional piece. And what I'm doing here is using some Prima Artisan dusting powder that allows you to create a, f a dimensional effect without necessarily having to paint an item. Like these little skulls, I just did the same pouring medium technique, dried, and then I gessoed them, and then I applied the dusting powder, and look at the cool effect. Prima Artisan powders come in many colors, and you can also mix them with different mediums for different effects. So it's a very cool um, product to use. I'm now gluing on the frame that I used the pouring medium to create, and I had painted that with some silver paint, and it was, uh, really bright and so I needed to knock it back but first I was going to um, readdress the face again I created with the pouring medium and I wanted to give her an eerie ghostly effect so I decided to use the green dusting powder um, and you'll see that I'm using Thermoweb's um, adhesive a dimensional adhesive paper um, which gave it a nice little pop in the frame and um, I have to say it, it really sticks very well, so make sure when you're placing it on whatever you're placing it on that that's where you want it. Once I measured the tape, I decided to, um, like I said, use the green to give her that ghostly effect. So you want to use a soft mop brush, and in this case a small one, and um, put the dusting powder to the side so that you can determine how much you really want. And I needed more, so I just took it straight from the jar at that point. And there you can see that really cool ghostly look. I'm adding the dimensional paper and then placing her in the frame. As I mentioned earlier, the silver paint was too bright for me, so I'm going to knock it back, again using a different color in Nouveau Cream Mousse. And um, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have knocked it back before I glued it on because my tendency is to um, 
get it on the places I didn't want to get it on. But this time it worked out fine. I used one of those sharp Q-tips again, got into the little nooks and crannies area, and um, gave it a more of a pewterish effect. So there was this little spot with glue that's been bugging me through the entire project. So I just took a brush marker, and um, no one will ever know. Well, I guess all you will know now, but no, normally nobody knows. Uh, ThermoWeb also provided me with this um, tape, and it's art tape. And on one side it's got the adhesive, and the other side it's got this material. Um, linen feel to it, so the first thing that came to my mind was, hey, I can create a little mini book binding for my project. So I inked it up with a, an ink pad, and I stamped it with some spider webs to continue the motif, and um, proceeded to glue it on. This is also similar to their art paper, but in tape form. I then used a pit big brush pen to, um, to um, fill in those spaces that made a little bit too short, and here you have the project. I'm going to have um, close-ups coming up, and I'm also going to be discussing the personal prize that I am offering through this hop. So stay tuned. Don't, don't shut that video off yet. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel inspired to alter something in a mixed media style. Now before you head over to the next artist video, check out my personal prize package, but first, I want to thank again the generosity of our sponsors, and also a special shout out to Didi and Carissa for coordinating this event. Here's my prize package for one lucky winner. Remember, you need to leave a comment as well as subscribe for a chance to win my prize as well as the sponsors' prizes. So thanks for your time and have a great day.